What's up guys, let's look at another Code Wars exercise. This one's called FizzBuzz Backwards. In the classic FizzBuzz problem, you go through a list of numbers, usually 1 to 100, and you print the number unless it's a multiple of 3, you say Fizz, or it's a multiple of Buzz, you say 5, or it's a multiple of both, aka 15, you say FizzBuzz. And this is a way to test how you handle conditions. You want to make sure you're checking them in a nice, clean, efficient way. You're not doing like three but not five, and five but not three, and both but not either. You want to do it nicely. Because then whoever's asking will say, oh, what if it's three, five, and seven? Or what if it's three and ten? And you have to change it, hopefully changing one thing and not tracking down all the places where three showed up in your program and adjusting each one. Now this problem says what if you got the output of that and you had to figure out what the factors were. So if you got one two fizz you'd go okay well the the first thing and they call it in they call it n and m the first thing must be three and then you go for buzz well the next thing must be a five because there was nothing earlier. Well, five is prime anyway, so there wouldn't have been anything earlier. And um, you can narrow it down. So in this one, you go one fizz, so there must be a two for fizz. That makes sense because the four is also a fizz. And then you go buzz, well, that must be a three. And that makes sense because the two times three, the six, is both. And in the um, outputs we get, or the inputs we get, it often goes longer. It goes all the way up to 50 or something. So we get more evidence uh, to work with. And I thought this was an interesting problem because I did it one way and then I looked at the solutions from other people. And they did it in a lot of different ways. What I did, I'm just in the mood of using match case because I've been learning about it recently and I think it's pretty cool. So I used match case. Obviously, it's not necessary. But let's give it a try. So I said n and m uh, start out as 0, 0, because we're going to use them later. And they never actually are 0. They never would be that as an answer. And then I'm going to go for, you know, for a loop. I This is going to be an enumerate. And there's not really a good name for the elements. You could call them element or I was going to say num like number, but they're not numbers. They might be fizz or buzz. So I'm just going to say x, the classic boring name, and enumerate array starting at 1. And then we're going to go match. Uh, I'm going to say like all three things we need, which is like x, n, and m. Again, x is a dumb name, but every other name I thought of was equally dumb. So fizzbuzz, the combo, seems special. And at first I thought, OK, every time we see a fizzbuzz, we have to factor it and divide and see what the possibilities are. But really, fizzbuzz only matters if you hit it first. If I go one, two, three, fizzbuzz, then I know that, well, a one or a two have not been claimed. So n and m have to be both four. So if we hit fizzbuzz while n and m are both zero, then that's special. We're going to check that first because that's like the most surprising case. Um, that's fine. But later, if we hit fizzbuzz, it's pretty normal. It's just like hitting a single fizz or a single buzz. So I'm going to say n equals m equals i. Because if we hit it first, we're done. We know that both n and m are that number, and that's it. Now, later, we can say, OK, if I hit a fizz or a fizz buzz, because if we avoid this case, then fizz buzz isn't special anymore. It's just another thing. So if I hit a fizz or a fizz buzz while n, like our first thing, is still 0, meaning we haven't found it, but m is something, um, 
then n equals i. Like if I'm on the 1, 2, if I have a 1 fizz, well then I know, OK, fizz must be a 2, because that's the thing we just had. And then the same thing for the other guy with uh, buzz, or fizz buzz, then uh, n equals whichever one we hit. And then we return, right? So that's really cool. And if you test it, it should work. But you might think, well, hang on, this is super inefficient. Because if they give you a long list and you figure out the answer in the first couple, then this still keeps going and loops through the list. So I guess if you wanted, you could say, if we've got them, then we return. So we might return on like the second one or the third one, and that's totally fine. It will return early. OK? And if I attempt, we'll get the same the same thing. Let's go ahead and submit. Now, if we look at the solutions from other people, I thought this was cool because this person used index like to find the fizz unless fizzbuzz was first or if fizz wasn't in there at all. Um, and then same thing for buzz. This is, I guess you could say, a tiny bit inefficient since we look through the list multiple times. But that's fine. They're not big. It's not a worry. This one is kind of the same thing, but they're um, using this part to avoid repetition. So we say, oh, we do that for fizz, and we also do that for buzz. But they use the enumerate like I did, because they know that it's, it's nice to uh, count that way and not have to ask the index method to do it. Um, this one. So this one is a little bit closer to mine in the way that they're like kind of looping once, even though it appears to do this thing. It's really just looking twice at every one. Um, this one is closer to that first example. I'm trying to highlight stuff, but the Google Translate pop-up is killing me. Um, and this one is saying, hey, we're going to try. If we can't find fizz, well, there must be a fizz buzz. And that's the same as this. Only because the inputs are guaranteed can we do this. They tell us in the instructions that they're not going to give us a bad one. They're not going to give us one that's like lacking enough info to find the answer. Because that could happen, right? If they give us 50 numbers and there's a fizz in the middle, there's no buzz at all, then we would have to say, well, fizz must be like 27 and buzz, we don't know. But um, they have gotten a little bit of validation taken care of because we don't have to worry about that kind of thing. And then we see some people using try except. We see some people using the next um, iterator function. We see some people checking if it's in and doing the index. We see some people using is instance to check the type because remember they're different types. Um, I didn't see anybody use match case like I did, but you don't need it in this case. We're not doing anything super deep in our structure. I just thought it was nice. And it shows that there are other ways to solve these, which is what makes it fun.